The global chemicals industry runs a huge part of modern day life. Without it, you wouldn't have the semiconductors and materials and smartphones, basic utilities, materials for clothes, cleaning and agriculture chemicals, popular beverages, and so on. This all contributes to a multi-trillion dollar market growing at an accelerating rate. So much of this is run on crude oil as a starting material, which is not a sustainable industrial engine. Today, we'll explore the inner workings of an industrial chemical process with a rich history that could hold promise for the sustainable manufacture of crude oil alternatives. At its heart, crude oil is a complex mixture of hydrocarbons originating from ancient marine microorganisms subject to extreme conditions in the Earth's crust. The mixture can be grouped depending on chain length of the hydrocarbon, functional group, and whether the molecule is cyclic, and so on. Each cluster usually has its own set of specific use cases. I'm sure you can imagine trying to find a technologically and economically scalable feedstock replacement for all of this is not easy. The fischer tropsch process is one evolving solution to the growing energy, chemical and sustainability demands at present. Originating from the 1920s, it gained prominence during World War II for fuel synthesis in the absence of conventional oil sources. Subsequently, it became integral in South Africa due to oil embargoes, and in recent decades with the resurgence of interest in synthetic fuels, fischer tropsch has become a focal point for sustainably diversifying hydrocarbon production beyond traditional oil and gas. Despite its history, widespread adoption has been hindered by high capital costs, technological complexities, and the abundance of conventional oil sources. The fischer tropsch process transforms sine gas, predominantly a mixture of carbon monoxide and hydrogen, into hydrocarbons with the aid of a catalyst, most commonly iron or cobalt nanoparticles. A carbon monoxide molecule will pass over the catalyst surface and form a surface-bound CO species. This interaction loosens up the carbon-oxygen bond, allowing for another carbon monoxide molecule to insert into the metal-carbon bond, generating a metal-bound alkyl species. The chain growth continues as these alkyl species react with additional carbon monoxide and hydrogen molecules, resulting in the formation of diverse hydrocarbons predominantly long-chain alkanes. With the right conditions and catalyst cocktail, using chemicals like zeolites or platinum group metals, these alkanes can be converted to aromatics and other molecular groups too. The critical fischer tropsch feedstock, syngas, can be produced from various sources, with natural gas reforming, coal gasification, and biomass gasification being primary contributors. Gasification is a thermochemical industrial process involving the reaction of a carbon-containing material with a controlled amount of oxygen or steam at elevated temperatures to produce sine gas and trace elements of other gases too. With sustainability becoming increasingly prevalent, using biomass sources like agricultural residues or waste streams from other industries, giving so-called biomass to liquids, is becoming increasingly attractive and the other routes can be named accordingly. And fischer tropsch is naturally then at the core of this so-called X to liquid suite. The chain length distribution of the products can be modelled via the flory schultz distribution, which uses an alpha parameter to quantify the probability of further carbon chain growth. If we want a hydrocarbon n carbons long, we must have n-1 successful extensions, followed by a failure, if you like, where the hydrocarbon gets capped and then released. The value of alpha has a big effect on the products we get, which affects their uses, whether as fuels, intermediate feedstocks, and so on. And this alpha value in turn depends on temperature, pressure, catalyst choice, carbon monoxide to hydrogen ratios in sine gas, and so on. In other words, we can tune alpha to get the product distribution we want. Reactor engineering might use something like a slurry phase reactor, which consists of solids suspended in a liquid through which sine gas is bubbled through. The three-phase setup enables enhanced catalyst sine gas contact and reaction kinetics. However, a challenge always lies with adequate cooling as fischer tropsch reactions are exothermic and also addressing catalyst fouling, which will progressively deactivate the catalyst. Cutting-edge Fischer-Tropsch developments are particularly thought-provoking too. There is the ongoing incorporation of renewable feedstocks, and more to come on this in future videos here as well, into the industry. 
Fischer-Tropsch catalyst innovation to boost selectivity and efficiency is a growing multi-billion dollar market and explores things like incorporating novel metal compositions or lanthanide atom promoters to cobalt catalyst surfaces to increase production of more useful, smaller carbon fractions. Multi-output machine learning models leveraging AI to improve efficiency and control in reactor engineering and process design is also occurring too. So there we have it, the Fischer-Tropsch process. If you enjoyed the video or learnt something interesting, please don't forget to share, subscribe and sign up to Chemify's mailing list on the website.